The name of this video tutorial is Ira Krakow's Blender 2.5 Default Scene Tutorial. I'd like to give a big thank you shout out to Neil Hersig of Tufts University at www.grillis.net who created the video on which my video is based. When you first open Blender, a number of default windows, panels, and controls are displayed. At first, you might be intimidated by it, but as you become more familiar with the Blender interface, you'll find that the layout is very well organized and provides an efficient interface for modeling and animation. The default layout contains five Blender windows called editors. Each of these editors contains a header and a menu line. Sometimes the header is at the top, other times at the bottom. Even though you might think of a header as at the bottom as a footer, Blender calls it a header. The first default editor window is called the Information Editor, located at the very top of the display. This window contains just the header line with frequently used commands in menu form. There's also information about the scene, object, and sub-object elements, memory, and selections. The second editor window is the Outliner Editor, with a small header window and a small window at the right as a hierarchical display of objects in the scene. The third editor is called the Properties Editor. It's a cluster of context buttons, panels, and controls, which control texturing, rendering, lighting, and scene objects. I will move the cursor until I see a double arrow. I left click and drag the window to the left to get a better look at it. All Blender windows can be extended in this way, either horizontally or vertically. The Properties Editor consists of context buttons, similar to tabs, that change panels and controls depending on the context. Below the context buttons are panels that open and close when you click on the open and close arrows. Inside the panels are controls which manipulate the scene based on context. These controls are typically either a function, an option, or a value. I'll resize the window based on the original size. The fourth editor window is the timeline editor at the bottom of the display, which has a header window which contains animation and playback controls and a running timeline that displays the position of the playback head with keyframes that you may have added to your animation. The fifth editor window, which comprises most of the default display, is the 3D viewport editor window. This is where you'll concentrate much of your modeling attention. It consists of a header menu located at the bottom of the window that contains viewing and selecting controls. On the far left of the 3D editor window are a number of tool panels for button controls for manipulating selected objects and adding keyframes. On the right is a large viewing space for viewing, selecting, and transforming your 3D objects. The 3D viewing space, which constitutes the visible blender scene, contains the default cube object, a lamp object, and a camera object. When I select any of the objects by right-clicking on them, the various editor window panels automatically change based on the object being selected. It's possible to change the type of the editor window. Click on the Editor Type button located at the left end of every editor header menu. For instance, here I'll change the 3D editor window to the File Browser editor window. Now I'll change it to the User Preference editor window. And now I'll change it back to the 3D viewport. The default Blender window can be changed. I suggest, however, that you make only minor changes until you become more familiar with the location of the editor panels, context buttons, and controls available in Blender. Happy Blendering!